Hello, this is Robert with Beyond 20. Today we're working in Shareable version 5, and we're going to cover some of the items that need to be addressed uh, before enabling the Sharewell services uh, when you're trying to restore a production czar into a test or dev environment. Uh, there's just a few things you want to double check uh, before enabling any of the services. Um, and the reason why you want to do this is because there are going to be a bunch of pending activities such as email notifications uh, for the resolve to close process or the incident pending notifications, which are going to send email to the customers. Um, your system is still going to be configured to use your production email listener and email account. Um, so there's just a few things you want to take care of uh, before enabling any of these services. So to get started, uh, let's go ahead and head over to the automation processes here on the left. And then individual automation process status. Uh, so we want to clear any of the pending automation processes. So this is going to be that incident pending notification or the resolve to close process I mentioned. Um, when you're creating a czar in version 5, one of the nice features now is you can actually uh, tell Sharewell to not include the scheduled activities to run. Um, so it will automatically clear those out of the czar that's being created and leaving your production system as is. Uh, so that's a nice new feature. However, I like to go in here and just double check that there's nothing pending and just going ahead and clearing these out automatically. Uh, so I'm going to go check File, Clear All Processes, and want to make sure I clear the scheduled activities as well as the in-progress items. And click OK. We'll go ahead and close this out. Uh, the next step is I want to check the browser and mobile settings, uh, specifically the browser application settings. Uh, so we want to make sure that the portal and browser client are po pointing to the correct dev or test environment. Uh, this will be your production uh, URL in here. And so we want to make sure that this is pointing to the correct server so we can do any testing in the browser client or the portal. So update these as necessary. Uh, the next piece is under the email monitoring. We want to make sure that we have a dev or test email account set up. Um, we want to make sure that this is actually the default email account. So down here, we want to check that make default account box. Um, and once you have this created, uh, go ahead and head over to the email and event monitor. And we want to edit this one. And make sure it's monitoring the correct email account. Uh, if you don't see the correct one in here, that means it was not set up in that previous step. So make sure that this is selected to the correct one, and then click OK. And the next step is the scheduling server. We can either pause the scheduling server or just go in and, and turn off individual items. Um, I like to keep it paused or remove the production-related scheduled jobs. And then there might be a, uh, a dev or test AD import that needs to run. We would create all those here prior to setting up the scheduling server. Um, it just depends on what your environment's like. If you have a separate AD uh, for test or dev versus prod, you want to go ahead and, and uh, configure those now. Um, so you can go ahead and do that here on your side. And then the last piece here we want to double check are the stored values. So under settings, go ahead and click on open stored values manager. And we want to set the current system stored value. Go ahead and open that up. Uh, here I have it as dev. Uh, when you're coming down from production, it's going to say production in here. You want to change this to either dev or test or whatever your environment uh, notates. Make that change in here. This is going to change what email address uh, items are sent out to. So if you're in a dev environment, um, emails are, should be configured to go out to your current system dev email recipient. Uh, so you want to go ahead and edit this value as well and make sure this is correct. This is the setting that all email um, emails out of Sharewell are going to go to as long as they were properly configured. So if you have multiple people that want to receive an email um, while you're doing the testing, you want to go ahead and configure this as a distribution list or give uh, mailbox access to this, this account uh, for those that need access to it. And then the last stored value is the sender. Uh, you want to go ahead and uh, just make sure this points to the correct email account that was set up under the email and event monitor. Um, under the edit email accounts, you want to make sure this is that dev or test email sender. 
So once that's all done, I'm going to go ahead and launch the Sharewell Server Manager. I have that running over here. And before we start the server, we want to just con configure this and make sure that we're pointing to the correct database. Uh, this should now be your test or, or dev uh, database. Make sure that it works by clicking the test button. Um, and then once that's all set, click OK, and then start server. Want to configure the rest of these as well. Um, so we just did the automation process server. We also want to do the application server, make sure that's up and running, and the email event scheduling server, configuration server. And then these last three at the bottom, these will self-configure um, as long as we've set up the Sharewell browser connection. Uh, when you launch the orange pill and you have a list of databases to connect to, you want to make sure that the Sharewell browser is pointed to the correct connection as well. So there you have it. These are just the quick uh, tips and tricks of items you want to address before enabling the Sharewell services. Uh, this will ensure that all of your emails are going out correctly to the correct people and not actually customers. Um, it will also make sure none of the scheduled jobs are running in the background, which those need to be turned off. Um, just one other note is be sure to make a backup of test or dep uh, before proceeding. Um, when you're doing an overwrite, you want to make sure that there's any SAML settings that were uh, configured in Sharewell uh, in your test or dev environment, that those are notated somewhere. Uh, we sometimes see clients overwrite their systems and not know what they put there. So you want to make sure that those are, are notated somewhere. Um, also, I recommend taking screenshots of some of these settings so you know uh, pretty quickly uh, what they need to be, such as the browser and mobile. Um, just having something to reference uh, pretty quickly makes it a lot easier to go ahead and complete the restore process. So once again, this was Robert with Beyond 20. Thank you.